Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Savior, Jesus, the one who resisted. Amen. Right after Jesus was baptized by John, the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasts for 40 days and 40 nights during this time, and this 40-day journey is the basis for Lent. A 40-day period in which we are encouraged to fast and to pray. Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Charles Baudelaire said this about the devil. The greatest trick the devil ever played was to make the world believe he doesn't exist. And I have to agree with Baudelaire because I question, I question the existence of the devil. The red tights, the pointy horns, the forked tail, the hooves, the beard. It all makes for a really fun Halloween costume. And too often humanity has blamed evil on the devil. In other words, we tend to not hold ourselves accountable for our evil acts. The devil made me do it. No, you did it. You made the choice in your behaviors. Don't blame someone or something else for what you have done. So let's take Adam and Eve, for, exa- for, for, for example. A crafty serpent, note that the text does not say the devil, It just says a serpent. A crafty serpent asks Eve about eating the fruit from the garden's trees. And she says they can eat from every tree except one. Touch that tree will die. Eat from the fruit will die, she says. So God gives Adam and Eve a lot of freedom here. You have the freedom to choose from many trees. But there's boundaries in freedom but it is a roomy freedom nonetheless. And the serpent responds, well, actually, you won't die if you eat from that tree. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you will know good and evil like God. So Eve looks at the tree and its fruit and thinking, you know, it does look pretty tasty. And we should know the difference between good and evil. Now, where is Adam in all this? He's right there. Why didn't he say anything? Why didn't he argue with the crafty serpent? Maybe he wasn't smart enough, but that's just a thought. Eve takes a bite of the fruit and has it to Adam so he can eat. Why didn't Adam stop her? 
Why did he take a bite? Maybe because he was the weaker one than Eve. But that's a thought. Now humans have the knowledge of good and evil. Now we are to be held accountable for our actions because we know the difference between good and evil. Do we do evil? Do we do good? Don't blame the crafty serpent. Don't blame the devil. You are the one that's making the choice. Now it's Jesus' turn to make a choice like Adam and Eve, not with the crafty serpent, but this time with the devil. The devil is also known as the tempter. This tempter, this devil, poses three good versus evil scenarios for Jesus. And how is Jesus going to answer? I mean, we all know Jesus is the good guy here. We all, we all know how Jesus answered because he's Jesus. We all know he's going to win. So why does Matthew put this in the gospel then? Because the reality of evil needs to be named and given a face. The three scenarios are meant to challenge Jesus' identity and trust in God. If he's really God's son and the good guy here, he'll trust in and be loyal to his father. So scenario one, Jesus has been fasting for 40 days. He isn't a bit peckish, he is famished. There's days if I don't get lunch, I get hangry. You know what hangry is? So the devil shows up and says, if you're God's son, turn these stones into bread. Imagine the aroma of freshly baked bread, sliced, you're in grandma's house too, with butter running down your elbows. And you are delirious and, ang and hangry and anxious with hunger. Jesus is being tempted to use his power to satisfy his own needs instead of trusting that God always provides. Scenario two. If you are the son of God, jump off the highest building in Jerusalem. Your father will send angels to save you. Jesus is being tested to see if he's going to misuse his power to save himself. It's a foreshadowing of his crucifixion. Because later on we will hear someone say, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross and save yourself. Scenario three. Okay, Jesus. That's my devil voice. <sighs> Okay, Jesus, we're going to the top of the highest mountain so you can see the entire world. It's all yours if you put your faith and trust in me. True power and true wisdom only come from God the Father. Jesus' power and wisdom are not about ruling earthly kingdoms. His allegiance is with God, with whom all praise and glory is due not with kings, emperors, presidents, or prime ministers. Jesus gets through his temptations with total reliance on God. Adam and Eve do not get through their temptations because they do not put their total reliance on God. And as I said in last week's sermon, we need Lent. We need that Lenten time of trial of Jesus' suffering and death in order to truly understand the victory of resurrection. So today, we need to understand that we cannot avoid temptation. It's inevitable for all of God's children. Jesus knows temptation because the Spirit led him into the desert to be tempted. In the wilderness, Jesus is off and alone, starving. How many times have we been off and alone, starving in the wilderness? 
alone in grief or depression, starving to be recognized as a viable person when others do not, all in a wilderness, a desert, a place desperately in need of life. And to top it off, then temptations are being thrown at us, and we succumb to them. It's Adam and Eve all over again. We know better, but we're weakened. That tasty-looking fruit is our salvation in the wilderness. Can we get through temptation as Christ did? We can if we put our trust in God and not ourselves. Trust that God does provide. Trust that God's saving power will get us through whatever we're going through to give us victory in the end. Now, at the end of Jesus' temptation, a defeated devil leaves and angels come to wait on him. So my prayer for us is that may a defeated devil leave us or whatever that face of evil may be and all those temptations in the wilderness leave us and God's angels come down and wait on us. Amen.